Hi, this is Richard Trott of the UCSF Library and Center for Knowledge Management, and I want to talk to you today about your maps, uh, your mobile maps in particular. Let's say that you work for a large state university in a metropolitan area, and they decide that uh, you need to implement some mobile maps as part of their mobile web presence. Uh, and they want maps of their two main campuses. So if you were to do something like that, you might your code might end up looking a little bit like the code you see on the screen here. We have uh, this line here, which you know, imports the Google Maps API, currently on version three. Woohoo! And then you need a map canvas, which is right there. And then you might have some JavaScript that looks a little something like this. Um, I you know, use a little PHP to check to see if a particular campus has been selected. And there's the latitude and longitude, the, the center of the map that I want, and the initial zoom level. And then uh, you create your, your map object and, and assign it to the previous the identified div. So if you do that, you end up with maps that look like this on your iPhone, let's say. So, you know, it doesn't look so bad. Uh, that's not so bad. That's that's pretty good. You, know, you move around. It loads pretty fast. But this kind of sucks. Um, Google doesn't have any building data for the Parnassus campus. The library it happens to be marked, but there's a bunch of other buildings that just don't show up at all, and what are you going to do? Okay, so as luck would have it, the university has a map styled the way they want, and you are either provided with or have calculated, have figured out the corners you need in order to tell Google Maps where the image should be overlaid on the map. You need to have the latitude and longitude of two corners, you know, the northwest corner and the southeast corner or whatever, um, two opposite corners. This, if you do not have that information, you can just guess and iterate until you get it right. Um, but at uh, Google I.O. 2011, Chris Broadfoot showed a tool that he wrote called uh, Overlay Tiler that is not yet at the time of this video that I'm making now, available. Uh, there's a stub in the uh, in, at code.google.com for it. But if you search for Overlay Tyler, maybe by the time you're watching this, he'll have made it public and it looks just outstanding. You just drop the image on top of it and, and, and move it and skew it if you need to. If, the, you know, if, if, if your image up on the image is not true north, it's kind of north or whatever, you can totally mess around with stuff as needed. So so as you can see in the code here, I've I've you know I've I've put in the uh, corner latitude longitude, the other corner latitude longitude for each of the campus images and I gave um, a, uh, a URL a, a relative URL to the to the actual image file. Now we may want to refactor these corners into an array or something, but as you probably guessed, the end result is going to kind of suck, so um, so we won't bother for now. But uh, so then what we do is uh, down here, you know, this is the, the this down here is the same map uh, creation call that we had last time, and now we've added this one here, where what we're doing is we're we're giving it the image overlay URL to create a ground overlay. We also Give it the lat long bounds, which uh, you, know, you can see the code to do that. And we also have to pass it the, uh, the map, so the map that we want to apply this overlay to. So now what happens is when we go to, oh, you know, you get a quick flash of the Google Maps image, and then the overlay shows up. Now, there is one interesting issue here to discuss before moving on, which is that um, satellite map, the stuff doesn't do anything anymore, right? And that's because, of course, our image is overlaid over the satellite. Now, for the purposes of my map application, I don't think the satellite view is particularly useful, so I'd like to get rid of it. 
So in order to do that, you go in here to, to your uh, options property list that you pass to uh, that you pass to the Google Maps API, and you say uh, map type control false. At least I think that's what we have to do. Let's let's reload. Actually, let's not reload. Let's go to the let's go to Parnassus and see. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it's gone. Now, uh, you know, again, we can pinch to zoom, and you know, it, you know, it, it seems all right, except you know, it gets a little blurry in there. Um, that's probably because that's not the really super high res image. The Mission Bay one is a little higher res, so you can zoom in. Yeah, and you can. Zoom out maybe a little bit, scroll around. So this border area kind of looks a little goofy. Um, you know, uh, you can sort of see a big black line and so on and so forth. So, uh, so we'll probably want to do something about that, but there's actually a more, uh, a bigger batter issue here, which, which I'd like to talk about, which is that Mobile connections can often be a lot slower than the connection I'm experiencing here because this iPhone simulator is running on my computer. The web server that's serving this content is running on my computer. So fortunately, there is a Mac on the Mac anyway, a preference pane called speed limit that you can install and add. Okay, so this this uh, 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 speed limit preference thingy can be downloaded from mscharag.github.com. A little usability thing, you have to make sure you click to unlock, otherwise the entire thing is disabled. Okay, so, so we've used this uh, use speed limit to slow down our network connection to about the speed of a 3G network. So let's see what happens when we try to load our, our map. Here we go. So see what happens. It, you know, okay, so it loads the background image and then it loads the UCSF map, at, uh, the Google map image. And now it's kind of paused as it, load, as it has to load three megabytes of image data for the overlay. So right now the user is probably clicking and zooming and doing all sorts of things and looking at if they're on Parnassus they're probably thinking you know where, where there's no building data in in Google Maps they're thinking this map sucks because it does and you know eventually what's gonna happen is the three megabytes of data will be loaded and here oh here it comes you can sort of see part of the overlay it's starting to come together this is this this isn't gonna do this this sucks you might be tempted to try to get away with a smaller image basically compress your image you know, you you know you allow for more lossiness and that will look okay when your map first loads and I'm still waiting for this map to load. in fact I'm giving up I'm going to tell the tell the computer to speed on up and just finish this up here okay there we go um, that'll look okay when the map first loads but what's going to happen and I'm not going to show you well maybe I will show you this but what what happens if you if you do that is you know when when the user zooms in which I've clearly zoomed in too much here um, when the user zooms in it gets blurry so here it looks okay zoomed in and it certainly looks all right zoomed out let's uh, yeah so anyway um, let's uh, let's just change the URL here so that's Parnassus And so here, so with the Parnassus image, I, 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 you know, made it a little, a little, uh, a little lost here. And as you see, it kind of, you know, all the lines look terrible zoomed in. And it's still, you know, like I think one and a half megabytes or something like that. So, you know, it loaded in a split second now because I'm using the, the, the you know, our wired uh, gigabit network. And I'm actually, you know, and, and that works great. But, you know, on a phone, it's still going to be terrible. And so <clears throat> the typical solution for this is to tile the image. You need to uh, figure out where Google Maps uh, 
is tiling its images and create tiles that cover the exact same area at every zoom level that you're interested in. Cutting the image into squares is going to be tedious and we don't want to do it. Fortunately, there, there's tools out there that can help. But first, I'm going to briefly talk about another issue. This is my image that I'll be using for the Parnassus campus. And you may notice that it is trapezoidal. Not quite a trapezoid, I suppose, but um, it uh, definitely is uh, not a rectangle. And the reason for that is because I received the map from people who made the map and it didn't line up with Google Maps. And I don't know if they purposely didn't do it to scale or if they're just using a different projection, maybe. I have no idea. But it was very high resolution. So I was able to distort the map in Photoshop and still everything looks readable and good when you zoom in. So I'm going to just briefly describe how I did this. I actually had to get help from my wife who knows Photoshop a lot better than I do on exactly how to do this. So I took a screenshot of the area that I wanted to cover in Google Maps and, and some extra area north, south, east, and west of there. And I opened that up in Photoshop, so that's my layer zero. Then I open this document when it was a square, or rather a rectangle, in Photoshop. So it's my layer one on top of my layer zero. Now, my layer one is very, very detailed and very large, and my layer zero is you know, just a screenshot. You may be tempted to compress layer one to sort of, and then try to get it to match layer zero. And actually, that's not what you want to do. What you want to do is you want to expand the size. You want to, you want to transform the size of the, uh, of the screenshot image uh, so that you can preserve all the detail in your map. Okay, so once you've made it much, much, much larger, you set the opacity for layer one to like maybe 70% so you can see what's going on underneath it, but still see, you know, try to line it up kind of. And then you use transform warp to move it around and use very patiently, just get things to line up and then you get it to line up over here and it doesn't line up over here anymore, et cetera, et cetera. And eventually you end up with a map that for better or for worse looks like this. So I've saved this to a PNG file. I um, don't save it to a JPEG or something lossy like that. Uh, now we're going to talk about how to tile it. So I have it over here in the phone. Um, let's see if I remember on the how to zoom out on this thing. There you go. So you can sort of see it's trapezoidal, but all the streets line up, so that's kind of nice. And they did not line up before. I probably should have saved a before screenshot or something, but I didn't, and I'm not going to do it now because I want to move on to tiling.